at the molecular level, when you have an aqueous solution, this is something that looks like water because there's something dissolved in it. When you have an ionic compound dissolved in water, that's an aqueous solution, and um, the ions are aqueous. So that means the ions are free flowing. They are positive and negative charges in the solution that you cannot see, and those positive and negative charges can conduct electricity. So at the macro level, we call that an electrolyte. So an electrolyte is a solution that conducts electricity because you have ions from an ionic compound that is dissolved. So um, you've heard of electrolyte drinks or sports drinks like Gatorade and Powerade. Those are ionic compounds dissolved in the solution. So you, you can make your own electrolyte actually with uh, salt, so table salt, NaCl, and usually a lot of sugar um, more than the salt and some food coloring. We'll be talking about that in lab. So this is shown uh, an electrolyte uh, testing setup. So you have a light bulb that has two electrodes coming down from the light bulb. And what this is, is an open circuit. So an open circuit we talked about back in chapter seven. And this has the electrodes, the positive and negative electrodes, uh, which are not connected. So in order to have this light light up, you have to close the circuit. So the positive and negative electrodes need to either touch or this works by dipping these electrodes into a solution that can conduct electricity. So this um, solution, if it has ions in it, literally will close the circuit because it, the ions will connect the two electrodes, cause a bridge to connect those two electrodes, and that closes the circuit and lights up the light bulb. So what happens when you put this elect electrolyte set up into distilled water? So distilled water has all the impurities removed. It should have nothing except for the H2O water molecules. And so when this goes into the water, so the light does not light up when this goes into distilled water. So for sugar, so this is sugar or sucrose dissolved in water. Sugar is a polar compound and that dissolves in water. And you can see that this looks like water. Okay, so you cannot see the molecules, which are C12H22O11. You can't see any of those particles dissolved in there. So that's an aqueous solution, but this does not contain any ions. So you need to have ions. So let's check. So here's the electrolyte setup going into the solution. So this light does not light up. Okay, so now looking at sodium chloride solution, the sodium chloride solution is uh, dissolved in water. And this is a little cloudy looking, but it really is, you cannot see the original sodium chloride. And that this is an ionic compound dissolved in water. So we can't see any white solid in there. So this lights up now because these electrodes that are in the solution, the electrodes are now a closed circuit because these ions can flow between those electrodes and closing that gap. And so this proves that there are ions in the solution, which are the sodium ions, the sodium cations, and the chloride ions, the chloride anions. So we know that ionic compounds and polar compounds will dissolve in water. And um, there's a principle called like dissolves like. So ionic compounds and polar compounds can form hydrogen bonds to water, that they have positive and negative or partial positive and partial negative interactions with the water molecules. Now, nonpolar compounds will not dissolve in water. An example of a nonpolar compound is oil. So we'll uh, be getting into the molecules and polarity, but oil is a nonpolar compound. Water is a polar compound, and so those are not alike. So like dissolves like. Polar compounds will dissolve other polar compounds. Nonpolar compounds will dissolve other nonpolar compounds. But polar and nonpolar, those are not like and like. This is unlike. These will not dissolve, okay? So they won't mix. So you've seen this at the macro level when you, you pour some oil in water. This is also um, what you'd see when you have an oil and vinegar salad dressing that they separate. So you can try to you can try to mix them up. You can stir it. You can shake it, but they will separate where the oil 
will usually form a layer on top of the water. And this has to do with different densities that oil is less dense and will float on top of the water or water is more dense and will fall below the oil. So at the molecular level, it's because oil is nonpolar. These are nonpolar molecules and they have no positive or negative or and also no partial positive or partial negative on the molecule. Water has all those uh, hydrogen bonds that you can see here. These are partial positive hydrogens attracted to partial negative oxygens. Those are intermolecular forces, the hydrogen bonds. And this is um, having partial positive, partial negative, having no partial par positive, partial negative. That's why oil and water don't mix is that they are unlike, they are not similar compounds.